You can't remain here in the city pretending that all is well when things are not going well. You have to go to the village and let your father know the true situation of things. Which I don't want to go back to that house. And you know why? Yes, I know. Your father deserves to know the situation of things. That you lost your business to the fosters and you have been thrown out of your house by creditors. Obi, you have to go home and let them understand the true picture of things. My grandfather, you mean? No, your father. There you go again. Why do you keep dwelling in your past? All you have to do, make him understand that he's your real father. <laughs> Not when his first wife, my mother's mother is no more. And my mother who gave back to me also is no more. And I do not even know my father. My father's second wife and her children do not like me. They want me killed and eliminated. You can't ask me to go back there. I won't survive there. I can't. I know. I understand you perfectly. When people are trying to make life unsafe for you, when they're trying to make it unhabitable for you, refuse to join them in making your world uninhabitable. Choose to be happy. Take your eyes off the bad things surrender your existence. And focus on the right things. Then and only then shall you have joy and happiness. Yeah, I know. You have a point. But then, if you could... No, 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 no. But go home and tell your father what happened to you. I don't want to go back to that house again. No. Not after all the humiliation I suffered from Nana and his siblings. Not after I vowed never to step my foot in that house again. But I can't continue to stay in Uche's house. He's already complaining. What do I do now? I don't have any other friend or relation in Enugu. Go back to that house again? Yes, Papa, I am. Nana and Chinedu left as soon as you gave us that instruction. And they let me do the whole work in the farm alone. They may think that they are punishing you. But the experience you are acquiring now is making you a man. Nana and the Chinedu are wasting their manhood. They do nothing all day but roam around the village drinking and going after little girls. In those days, I would have sold them into slavery. But they are lucky. Don't let their behavior bother you because they have no direction, they have no future. Papa, even Ngozi did not come to the farm with any food today because Chinedu and Nana were not there. I was left to, to, to work on an empty stomach all day. Ngozi at her age to have been married with children, but she's still staying with me. It's sad. It's pathetic. You go to the kitchen and find yourself something to eat. Thank you, Papa.
Ngozi isi kwa kwa. Ngozi, where is my food? Brother, that girl is not too fat, bro. That girl is too fat, Biko. <laughs> I don't like fat girls. <laughs> you don't see excuse of that thing the third woman my mama is bringing for you tonight. I don't know why. But who can do it? I don't know why. I don't know why, Biko. Ngozi, you're not the one I'm asking. I said, where is my food? Brother, you have to consider that girl. I don't know. So it's a dog that's back here. Don't you dare touch me! Are you stupid? Are you not supposed to dish food for everyone in this family? Which family? Which family? Because... Give me your Obin, don't try me. Don't just try me. Leave him! Let him touch her. So this is what both of you have to say in this. What else do you want us to say? Is Ngozi your mate? Tell me, is she your mate? You are even talking to him. Leave him! Don't her! Just touch her. Eh. Because this is the room for you. I love you. I'm going to charge you money. And I got it. Okay. You were here to cry again. No, no, I, I, I'm not crying. I, I just... You were crying. I saw you from afar. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I won't cry again. You look ill. Have you eaten? You haven't eaten anything today. Come. Stop crying. Come. Follow me to my place. Let me give you something to eat. Do you like the food? Mama, why are people so wicked and heartless? Why do Ugodia and her sons delight in starving that boy? Mama, you needed to see how he was devouring the food. I'm very sure he's not eating since yesterday. My daughter, stop crying. Some people are like that. Very wicked. Especially to those they know that they are better off. Right. Was he the person that asked his mother to have him out of wedlock? Was he? 
They make him suffer for the sins he knew nothing about. Why? Don't worry. God is in heaven. Watching everything that is happening here. And he is the only one who can take care of them. It's okay, my daughter. Stop crying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mama. Not just for the food, but for giving birth to such an angel. My son, you are welcome. And anytime you are hungry, eh? Don't fail to come here to eat. Enugu? I'll remember that, Mama. The story. Ask him how many times I've always asked him to come here and eat. But I'll still be the one to drag him here. Every time he'll be looking up as if food falls from the sky. Mama, thank you once again. Honestly, I don't know what I would have done without both of you. I probably would have been dead by now. My son, you don't have to talk like that. No one is his brother's chief. God knows that you are here. And he will always make provision for you. Amen. Mama, stop crying, huh? Is this the kind of humiliation Uche wants me to go back to? No. Never. I'd rather be dead in this city, living on the streets, than go back to that life again. Life is a mystery. No one can tell tomorrow. Helpless people now. Honestly, Chief, I'm overwhelmed. My heart is full of joy over what the Lord is using you to do in our parish. Um, the parish council and I have decided to come and say thank you specially for your good work. Father, you don't have to go through the stress of coming down to my house just to say thank you. But what I do, I do for God. Not for man. I understand, Chief. But I also know that God lives in heaven and, up, and functions on earth through men like you and I. So there's nothing wrong if I become the voice of the Lord and to come and say thank you for all you have been doing. I do send to other pastors and priests. So many of them. Once it is the work of God, church project, I'm always delighted in seeing them move fast. Hmm. Maybe that has been the secret of your unending wealth. Who knows? <laughs> Sir, men from Igbo's cabinet are seated and they've been waiting since then. Oh, sorry. Uh, please. Tell them I'll be with them shortly. All right, sir. Yeah. All right, Chief. I'll be on my way now to allow you to attend to other things. May the peace of the Lord be with you now and forevermore. And with your spirit. Chief, Chief. Chief, you can. Please, Chief. Uh, you are very welcome. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I kept you people waiting. Chief, there's no problem at all. No problem at all, at all. We are even more comfortable 
in your absence. <laughs> Who will ever complain when left alone oh, in dear. such a paradise <laughs> with goodness? Uh, um, my others, please, uh, let's be precise. Uh, let's go straight to the point because uh, I will be attending a board meeting in an hour's time. <clears throat> the Igwe sent us to you. Okay. The Igwe and we, his cabinet members, have sat down over the philanthropic projects we have executed in our community over strategic places, ranging from installation of electric transformers at various ends to drilling of boreholes and water distribution in every kilometer work. Also, being instrumental to building of most of our cathedrals. It's a lot of good works. How many can you count? Just one man, the same man doing all this. And I'm going to leave there. Hey, Chief, in case you could if we pretend as if you are not impressed over your good jobs, it will not go well with our spirit and your spirit. Uh, thank you, my people. Thank you so much. Um, yes. The Igwe and his council in bids has decided to honor you with a chieftaincy title. Owan Etiro Rawang of Umo. Owan Etiro Rawang. Sorry. Uh, my phone is ringing. Mm. Oh. Uh, my people, uh, can you permit me to answer my daughter? No uh, okay. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Daddy. Why are you sounding like that? Hello, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, Casey. What, what happened to Casey? I don't know, I don't know. We were coming out from the shopping mall. Then all of a sudden he screamed like somebody under an attack. What? Before I knew what was happening, he fell down. And it was not something like a seizure for a very long time before he stopped breathing. What nonsense are you talking about? Daddy, I don't know, I don't know. I brought him to the hospital. Our family doctor is attending to him. Um, okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I'll be there right away. I'll be there. Um, my elders, please. I have to attend to a very pressing need right away. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I have to leave you people here. Eh? I'm sorry. Cardiac arrest. Yes, Chief. We have placed him on a life support machine. Currently, he's in coma. And um, his chances of surviving are 50 50. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do you even know who we are talking about here? I know he's your son, Chief. No, you don't know. Doctor, you don't know. I have two children a boy and a girl. This girl sitting down here is the girl. And the one lying there is the boy. My wife died in a ghastly motor accident that rendered me impotent. I believe you, you understand what I mean by that. Chief, I am your family doctor. I know all those things. Mm -hmm. I don't think you understand me very well. I just want to explain it to you so that you understand that on no account I mean, on no account should anything happen to that boy. It's okay. We are trying our best. Uh, no, no. I, I didn't say you, you, you should try your best. Doctor, I mean that nothing, nothing should happen to that boy. Whatever it takes. Chief, uh, for now, I suggest we continue praying for him. 
because God is the only giver of life. Heavenly Father, please, God, let my brother not die. Let Casey not die, please, God. Daddy, you are all we've got. After we lost our mom to a car accident, Daddy, you are all we have left. Please, please, I beg you, my Lord and my Savior, please. Chief, I suggest you go to bed. Find a way to sleep because your health is also at risk here. Please. Did you say sleep? Sleep? How? How do I sleep when my, my, my son, Casey, is dying? How? Chief, Steve is right. Sir, so you've been a devoted Christian all your life. And you've contributed so much money into God's work and humanity. So I strongly believe this is the time your numerous seeds and giving to various churches speaks for you. So some advice to you is to go upstairs and sleep. Yes, sir. Nothing will happen to KC. God, God, you've had it. My son, Casey, Casey must not die. Lord, you say that in every situation we should give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for you are God that call light out of darkness. Father, you are God that do not desire the signature of any man to be the God that you are. We bless your holy name, O God, for our brother, Father, who is lying down here sick. Lord, it is for your glory. Father, it is for the manifestation of your name. We call upon you right now, O oh God. Come down, O oh God. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Father, for we know that you are not a wicked God. You are not an unjust God. Father, to have abandoned this young man here, Lord, you will not abandon him. Father, for the sake of his father, Father, who has been working in your vineyard, who has been the source of our joy in your vineyard, Father, you are going to heal him. Therefore, Lord, we command. Lord, I command healing upon him. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be healing upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing. Father, in the name of Jesus. You don't have to worry. This is just a trial you must overcome. Our God cannot be wicked to allow anything to happen to your son, nor the God that I serve. Chief, if truly there is a God in heaven that rewards righteousness and faithfulness, I can bet with my life nothing will happen to your son. He will come back to you. Oh, I can see the Thanksgiving ceremony taking place. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. I shall be praying for him from the chapel. Um, one more thing, Chief. You need to leave this hospital premises. I was told that you have not slept since yesterday. No, Chief. It is not good for your health. You need to go home. Go home and sleep. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, you will be greeted with good news of his recovery. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Chief, you don't have to thank me. You deserve more than that. In fact, I am not supposed to leave this place until he is fully recovered. 
That is how much you mean to us. You deserve more than that, Chief. Thank you, Father. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Enough of this gospel. I have enough clergy friends that can tell me or talk to me about God. You are only a medical doctor, and that is what you know best. Tell me the health condition of my son, Casey. Chief, we lost him. You what? Take out, Chief. We did all we could. Engage all our professional skills. We even employed some of the external experts just to make sure he survived. I did all I can. Even, I, I even walked beyond my limits because I know the implication of losing him. But who am I to question God's decision? Hey! 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 I keep asking why bad things happen to good people. Why? 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 I don't know. Chief, if I say I'm speechless, it is but the least. In fact, I lack words to express my inner feelings right now. But nonetheless, no one can question God. I still believe that God will not leave you empty-handed. Our God is a miracle worker. Therefore, Chief, do not despair. You see, Chief, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Chief, the scripture says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. One thing I know for sure, Chief, is that our God is not an unjust God. He will never forget all your good works in his vineyard. All you need to do is to be still, and you shall see the miracle of God. Um, Chief, the Igwe sent his condolences to you and your lovely daughter. He promised to pay you a visit the moment he comes back from his trial. Just be a man. Hmm? You can. Yes, Chief. Arun. But he will be fine after. Baba, you are already a man. Keep being a man because man is equal to any temptation that comes his way. You will soon get over it. It's a matter of time. Time will heal your wound, Chief. Take heart. Yeah, no, no. The reason I call you to this place is because you are the only person that can convince my friend Obina to go against his will. Okay. 
he can't continue hiding in my place. Obina has a family. He should go and tell them, especially his father, the true situation of things. Uche. Yeah? I understand you perfectly well. I know what you're facing. If you have Obina staying in your house doing nothing. Um, but to tell you the truth, Obina has come through hell in the hands of his step-grandmother and her children. Are you telling him to go back to that same place? It won't be easy at all. I will talk to him unless you intending him going back to the village and coming back to meet you. Uh, fine, fine. Then I understand the way you two feel. Obina coming back to city for one condition, unless he will start a new business. But if not that, Obina is not coming to stay in my house again. Yeah, I got you. I understand. No problem. I will, I will talk to him about it. I will try my best and convince him. Better. Please, thank you very much. Bye. If Uche wants me out of his house, I will go. I will leave his house for him after all it is his house. But he shouldn't forget all those times when the going was good and I rendered him help. It's not all about Uche Obin. It's all about you. You come from somewhere. You have a home. That's why you need to go and tell your people the situation of things with you in the city. I do not have people and you know it. Obin. I mean your father. I don't have a father either. Obi might perfectly understand what you are going through in the hands of your step-grandmother and her children. But at least, that's the only place you can call a home. You didn't just fall from the sky. That home is not real. You know what I go through in that house. If not for you and your mother, I probably would have died. Obi, nothing will happen to you. I am still by your side. I've not left you. No matter how hostile that home is, that's the only place you can call a home. Please just go and tell them, more especially your father. He is not my father. But at least, he is the father to the woman that gave birth to you. You need to let him know your, your situation. Tell him your problems. Please. Nenna. Will you go to the village with me? Chief, since you don't want to gouge yourself a second wife because of your condition, I suggest you go for a formal adoption. Father. You talk as if I deliberately do not want to get myself a new wife. I do. But it is wickedness to bring any woman to such a prison when I know that I can no longer perform my duties to her as a man. Who do I want to punish a woman? Why? I understand the perfect chief. Don't mind my joke. The point I'm trying to make is uh, you get yourself a son through adoption. I can personally arrange for that from one of our mission orphanages. And who will not the boy? You can employ the services of a nanny. That is if your daughter wouldn't have. So. Adopting a total stranger into my life is now an option. God's blessing and faithfulness. A total stranger. No more a son from my mother's. Chief, God's ways are not our ways. There is nothing wrong in adoption. There are even more blessings to eat than you may know. Maybe God may have had plans towards this direction all this while. 
Please think about it. There is nothing wrong in it. Dad, I think I like the idea. I mean, I need a brother. Somebody I can call my sibling. It will also help me get over the death of Casey. And who plays mother to the boy child? I'm here. And I'll always be here. Moreover, getting a nanny is not a bad idea. I like it. Let's go for it. <sighs> Nothing can be more assuring in fulfillment than when you are no more. Your blood, your flesh, your replica takes over from you. Dad, don't worry. It's the same thing. I mean, by the time you watch him grow from a baby to a boy, from a boy to a man, you start seeing yourself in him. And then you, 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 you see him as your flesh and blood. Sandra. Yes, Daddy. Blood, they say, is thicker than water. Dad, family bonding is stronger than blood apart. Think about it. Oh, uh, you see, baby, I'm so happy seeing you get over the death of your brother. So soon. I'm really impressed. Yeah. I'm even impressed with myself. Maybe it's the idea of my dad getting us a foster son that really helped. An adoption? You don't like it? No, it's, it's okay. I don't know, but is it necessary? You know, does it make sense? Did you just ask that? Yes, uh, you know, considering your age, you know, you're going to be older than him, you know, your brother. You're going to look more like a mother to him than a, than a sister, I don't know. It doesn't does make sense. What, what do you think? Does that matter? Oh, so it's okay. Yeah. Everything has scattered. Everything our plan has scattered. Onto what level? Ah, onto what level? My wife to be now. Yes. See, Jude, her dad is planning on adopting a male child. Are you Someone that is going to inherit everything he has when he dies. Are you serious? I'm telling you. The worst part of it all is that, you see my woman, yes. I tried to see if I could discourage her. I did everything within my reach to discourage her. But as everything has been, it seems she has a fans of the development already. Child. I don't understand. I've done everything I could. She's not even listening to me. People can be different. Instead of that man allowing his only daughter to inherit his wealth when he dies, he preferred bringing in a total stranger into the house to inherit what he doesn't have any connection with. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. What? Someone that has no connection with, with how everything started. Well, anyway, um, but see him. Jude. Yes? You see my babe, even if the dad pass away, it's not as if she won't inherit anything, Sha, but you know... I know. I know. See, I was hoping on you becoming the owner of everything. I mean, everything. But, <clears throat> nevertheless, what will be, will be. What's going to be? Tell me what's going to be then. Calm down. Talk to me, what's going to be? Forget it. 
I'm not hungry. Hey, you are not hungry. Are you sure you are feeling fine? Now you hardly eat these days. Oh, where's Moody? What is the problem? I am not feeling. I mean, how can I be feeling fine when I have not heard from my grandson for the past one month? I've tried his phone. It is permanently switched off. I sent people to the city to go and establish his whereabouts. They came back and they told me that he no longer stays where he used to stay. You expect me to be happy when I don't know what has happened to my grandson? No, I am not fine. And because of that, I am not hungry. Oh, Sario, I never knew it has to do with the bastard. What? Obina, my son. Is that you? Yes, Papa. It's me. The Lord be praised. How did you suddenly disappear without trace? What happened to you? Papa, I, I've been meaning to come back, but I, ha I had a couple of things holding me down. Brother! Brother! Omi! What is it? Omi! He's back! I thought he said he was not going to step his foot in this compound again. Who? Who else? Obina. Yes! As I'm talking to you now, he's with Papa out there. I thought you were even going to say something more serious. That is not part of my problem now. I have a lot of things to think about. Eh? He's not your problem, Ewa. Okay. Oga here, Megan and Yafu. When Papa will hand him over all of your inheritance, that time you shall know he's your problem. I could go, my girl. Hey. He's allowing me. Abu. Okay. You look like you have a long story. I really do have a long story, Papa. All right. Take your luggage inside. We'll talk later. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you, Papa. So, Obina, I've been going through all these tribulations. All these challenges, all these temptations, without letting me know why. Papa, I did not want to bother you with my problems. I see. So your, your, your problems are, are no longer my problems, right? No, no, it's not like that, Papa. I always knew that something was wrong. Because I always knew it. In fact, each time I saw you in my dream, I felt something was wrong. You didn't look like yourself to me. You did not. But now that you're back, I thank God for it. Amen. You know, there is something I want to let you know. And this is pure philosophy. The downfall of a man is not necessarily the end of his life. No! What marks you out as a man is your ability to rise when you fall. And I can tell you, Looking at you, Obina, I can say you are the man. You will rise again, son. Amen. You will rise again, son. Amen, Good. Papa. I mean, look. Look at all the rascals that mill around my house, just eating. Not knowing that it's about time they started their own families. But no, they never think about it, no. They want to be parasitically attached to their father, which is a shame. You left this place. And in under one year, you were able to establish your own business, rent an apartment, buy a car. I tell you something. You will rise again. Amen. Yes, you will. Amen, Papa. If it means selling every single property I have, I will do it to ensure that you, Obina, 
will re-establish your business and it will flourish again. Thank you, Papa. Papa, God bless you. I will. God bless you, Papa. It's all right, my son. Papa, I don't know what to say to it's appreciate okay, you. Son. God it's bless right, you. Son, son. What is wrong with you, Nenna? What has come over you? How can you just wake up one day and decide to go back to the village again? The, the, the plan is to keep you around to help you secure admission in one of the highest institutions here in Inugu. But, but I, can still, I can still pursue my admission from the village. Inugu is not far from the village. What do you even see in this village that is making you want to go back again? Yeah? Your mates are coming now to, to see light and you, and you prefer darkness. What is so interesting in that village that you prefer to go back there than to stay here in the town? Hey brother, nothing. I just want to go to the village. Tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. Are you having issues with anybody around this house? No, I'm not having any problem with anybody. Babe, how could you say that? She's not having any problems with me, if that's what you're thinking. Eh? Please, allow her to go back to the village, if that's what she wants. Simple. No, honey, no. She's not going back to that village. I'm not going to the village to, to disturb anybody. I just want to go. I'm not caught up for this uh, nonsense this morning. By the time I come back in the evening, you tell me everything because right now you're talking nonsense. I want to go, I want to go. Every time crack, crack, you will kill somebody. I just want to go. My dear, has he accepted that you go back to the village? Yes, he has. And he made me promise him that I will come to the village and stay with him. Oh, that's good of you. Mm. Don't mind your brother. He'll come around, okay? Thank you. Hey, I I thought they said he is the champion. Because he went to the city and made small change. He couldn't hear for now in this house. Why is he back to the village again? Oh, he oh. would not have... Mama, that is not even the issue now. The issue is that Ngozi overheard Papa telling Obin that he will sell a plot of hand to establish him in business. Mama, I heard it very clearly. Mama, hex we roll. I swear, hex we roll. How can Papa think of using our inheritance? The land that I've been crying that it is not enough for my brother and I to settle a total stranger. Hey! Why? Hey! Papa does not know what I'm capable of doing. It's about you, man. Because if he does, he wouldn't have even imagined that nonsense in his heart, let alone saying it out. Papa doesn't know at all. Forget all those, those, those thoughts. Forget it! I'm going to know that I'm going to be he couldn't sell one to establish his own son, his own flesh and blood in business. Mm. He wants to sell and establish the bastard in his house. Imagine. Yeah. Imagine, Mama. And I call him. And I call him. And I call him. And I call him. And I call You know you are my only sister. Mm, and you are my only brother. I know I want the best for you. Mm? Like, uh, have you asked for anything and I never did it for you? No, no. Good. Now, in the morning, I knew you were trying to say something. But because of the presence of my wife, you withheld it. Now she's asleep. It's just the two of us here. Please tell me, what is the problem? No, brother. I'm not having any problems with auntie. We are fine. Then why have you suddenly decided to go back to the village? It's... It's about me. 
about you? What about you? It's... It's... Come on. It's... Uh, it's about Obina. Obina. Yes, brother. And who is Obina? Um, Mazuko's grandson. Mazuko's grandson. Yes, I know him. Yeah. I, 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 I heard he's doing well in the city, very well for himself. Yes, brother, he was doing well in the city until he ran into the hands of um, some fraudsters. Uh -huh. they, they took his money, took his business, cars, everything. He was left with nothing. That's why he's decided to go back to the village, at least to pick up. And because of him, he wants to go back to the village? That bastard! What are you even doing with him? Ain't nobody like him. And I hope you're not trying to bring him to this house anytime as a suitor. No, 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 brother, at all, not at all. We, Obina and I, we are, we are just fond of each other. We are just friends. And, and you know how his uh, um, grand, grandmother and her, her children treat him. So I'm, I'm always there to help him ease his pain. That's enough! Pen Isa. Now listen to me and listen good. You're not going to that village, not today, not tomorrow, not any time! I don't want to go now. This discussion is over. I don't want to, I want to go. If, if you talk about this anymore in this house, you'll find it out with me. Good night. Every time you'll be shouting, 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 shouting. And you see your own going. I, I want to go. A relation of mine whose son lives in Europe had expressed some intention to marry that land. Uh, he impresses me as being quite serious about it. Uh, I'm assuring you that the moment he pays for that land, the following day you are off to the city. Resume your business. Oh, oh Papa, thank you so much. <laughs> Papa, you don't know what you have done for me. All right, son. Thank you, I appreciate um, this. You see, son, you don't know what you mean to me. I hope that one day, someday, the good Lord will make you realize what you mean to me. Then you will know why I'm doing all this for you. Amen. Papa, what is this that I'm hearing? Your ears are not made of plastic, so whatever it is you hear is what you heard. I heard that Mas Uchechuku's son, the one that lives in Europe, wants to buy our parcel of land behind the house. You heard right. Papa, why? You asking me why I want to sell my own parcel of land? Are you out of your mind? But I've been wasting in this village since I came back from the city. I am glad you realize you've been wasting. Whose fault is it? begging you to sell just one plot of land and give me the money so I can go back to the city and hustle like other people. You refused. Now you want to sell the land for this, this, this thing. This bastard. <laughs> no, let's, uh, let's just uh, turn our minds a little bit and find out who the bastard here is. I sold a parcel of land, gave you money for it, you left for the city. You blew that money in the company of free women, patronizing all sorts of bottles you could come into. At the end of the day, you came back here, dissipated and finished, to once again live at my own expense. Oh. Who is the bastard here? You will not dare it in this compound, else heads will roll! So I've looked at your head and it looks to me like it qualifies to roll. Those who knew me will tell you about my prowess with the merchant. One blow and the head rolls. By the way, let me remind you, I've arranged a chopping block and I think it will fit your head. One strike and the head rolls. You will not try it. You will not try it. I will not try it in this compound, but I can try this glass of palm wine. Try it and see how it is. <laughs> it's good, Papa. It's good. <laughs>
What right do you have to catechize me? What's your problem, son? I said I will not, and I mean every word of it. Listen to me. You know, sometimes when I look at you, I ask myself, am I really your father? Am I? The reason is simple. I have a very strong feeling that your mother strayed because, listen son, whenever I watch you and think about the kind of original stupidity that characterizes everything that you do, I say, this is not my son. And you're standing before me and saying, you mean you will not? Listen to me. 